All right, my man, state your name and let them know you on Real Talk with Nick. I'm on Real Talk with Nick. My name is Tony from Harlem. I'm on Real Talk with my man Nick. That's what's Real up. Real Nick fan, baby. That's Real what's Nick up. Fan. All right, and your boy Nick Avelli. Nick and we're here to talk Nick. about some New York Nick basketball, man. Are you a Nick fan, sir? I'm a, I'm a diehard Nick fan. How long you been a Nick fan, man? I've been a Nick fan since 71. Oh, so you talking about the championship. I'm talking about the in between the first two championships, the real champ, the only championships. Now, I, I got to ask you a question, man. It's been a long drought, man. Yes. Yes. 50 but years, you baby. still remain a Nick fan. I'm going to stay. I'm a loyalist, man. I got to stay with my Nick. I'm a, I born, raised in New York. I'm going to stay, stay New York Nick fan. Okay. No matter what management, no matter what owner, I'm a Nick fan. I'm about the Knicks, not the person. Name across the chest, baby. Okay. So you ain't bandwagon like these Brooklyn nah, Nets fans. I can't bandwagon now. Nah. Okay, man. Let me get right into it, man. Who is your favorite player on the Knicks? Who is my favorite player on today's team? Yeah, today, back in the day, doesn't matter. Well, my favorite player, my favorite nigga of all time is Bernard King. Bernard King? If we would have kept Bernard King, we would have won a chip when we drafted you. You believe but that? That happened in 87, 86, when he had his knee injury. We drafted, yeah. we drafted you in. By the time he came back, they kind of left. That was the best small forward we ever had. Okay, okay. Now, as far as today's players, when we speak of these New York Knickerbockers, man, Today's players? We are in need of a point guard. We desperately, desperately need a man. dynamic point guard. We definitely need that. A score is Who's going to fulfill that vacancy, man? Because I asked somebody, who do they think is going to be able to fulfill that spot? Well, and the person said to me, was quite interesting, that the person to fulfill that vacant spot, when you speak of the point guard for the New York Knicks, it's not in the NBA yet. He feels that these players of today cannot handle the New York market. Well, I think it's possible you just got to get the right guy. He's not on the team yet, possibly. But what we got to do is a dynamic guard that he's already been through the college. He's already been, well, far as Barry, already been in the limelight, like coming from a big school. He would probably handle the New York limelight better. Or even a New York a New York point guard. Right. But that could be really cheap. We had Mar Barry. You know what I'm saying? We have New York point guards, but you got to have an even demeanor to be a point guard. Okay. So you got you to you walk the line. You got to have the skills and be able to handle the media at the same time. Okay. They're out there. Now, who would you like to see that's currently in the NBA now come to the Knicks to fulfill that point guard position, man? Who would you be willing to pack up now, the trade just to get up? The possibility, I will, Dame Dollar, Dame Lillard. I would love him on a, he would be, he would be the perfect New York Knicks point guard. Yeah. Because he don't take no shit and he's even killed. He can handle the media and he got game. Mm. I would give up anybody on our team for him. Wait, 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 wait. You say anybody. Well, he, he's better than anybody on our team right now. Even though I like young R.J. Barrett, I like Julius Randle. He's a free agent. We can get that again. But as far as having a dynamic point guard, they're hard to find, baby. That's like a diamond. What do you say to those who say that Damian let it wouldn't be a good fit because it would be like we signing Carmelo Anthony, who's going to ISO the ball? Well, he's not ISO. He's a point guard. So he's not going to – I mean, he'll take the last second shot. But I would say that's a that's a that's a myth. He's not an ISO player. Damalea is more of a, a more of a team guy. Just check his assists. Okay. So I think he's a more of a team guy and he's a leader. That's what you need. A leader is gonna do whatever. He's gonna if you need points, he's gonna give you points. If you need assists, he's gonna give you assists. You need a leader. A leader is gonna play whatever position you need him to, to do at that time. Even though he's having a point, he's gonna make sure everybody's accountable. That's what a real point guard leader needs. You need a right. leader. Because we had guards in the past that didn't fulfill that. Didn't fulfill like Frank that. Nilekina. Frank Nilekina, he wasn't he didn't have the skill to do it. Why is that? Do you think he got the short end of the stick though, being that we had so many coaches doing his short? Yeah, he had a lot of coaches, but he never he never he never could offensively he never was consistent. He could never have a consistent jump shot. So he could he couldn't keep defensive on us. So they'll play off of him anytime. They'll play off of him and, and make him dare him to shoot. So to run a team, you can't be like I'm gonna give you a perfect example, Rondo. He wasn't a shooter, but he taught himself how to shoot. So they had to respect him. By the time he came to a championship, people respected Rondo. Before then, Jason Kidd, the same thing. He couldn't shoot. But once he got learned how to shoot a little bit, they had to respect him. Okay. Now, you have mentioned Julius Randle yes. previously. The power forward for the New York Knicks. Yes. It looked like we got a conflict of interest when we got a backup power forward. Obi Toppin. And Obi. Now, when got Julius up. Randle got hurt, we saw a little bit of Obi. We saw a little bit of Obi. Yes. Which got people wondering, should we see more of Obi? And if so, should we let Julius Randle go to fulfill that spot with Obi? I would say give you and I, Julius Randle one more year, but I think they need to play together. 
Because we need to be younger and more up and down. Julius, sometimes he can hold the ball a little bit too long. We got to get him to play faster. If he can play faster, he might can duplicate that the year before that. But if he can't, we can't have him hold the ball. He just have to play to his, his strips is down low, really. He hit threes last year, but it wasn't working for him. So he got to get back to what he knows. And that's it around that paint area. And stop holding the ball. You know what I mean? Once you stop holding, you got to let the ball move. The ball got to move. Do you he's think a good player, but I don't know if he's the leader that we need him to be. Someone said to our interview that he's not even a first option. Like he wanted the extension. He got the extension. You got the 117 yeah. mil. And then his game just flip flop. Well, I think he, he got a little, you know what I'm saying? He got a little gas, got a little big headed after he got the deal. But I think he didn't he didn't work on his game. And like before, before last year, he worked on his game. He worked on his jumper. He got better. Now he got all the accolades. He, he, he should have did the same thing. Kept working on that same game. And now he got a little big headed. He thought he made it. But once the rest of the league knew what you, they watch and take now. So they already see what you did last year. You got to step your game up another level. He didn't do that. He didn't do he that. He wasn't consistent shooting again. So now his game was back to, all right, we're going to let him shoot, but we're going to clog the middle. Right. So he got caught up in that, you know, the accolades was too much for him, you know, too much to bear. But you still got faith in Julius Randle. I still think he could be a good player because still. he does have heart. You know, he does have heart. But he, but I don't think he should be the number one option. No? No. Number two? Yeah, he's a good new, he could be a number two option. He can score and he got grit. Okay. And he plays deep. Okay. Now we'll move on, man. A man you quickly, man. I asked everybody who I interviewed. A man you quickly is the combo guard. Mm -hmm. But some say, you know, he, he could just, you see some flashes of him being a point he's, guard. Yeah. he's a, That's why he's a combo guard, but he has to learn how to run a team. He still hasn't figured out how to manage a team. It takes a minute. He, because he didn't play point guard all his life, he's still learning how to play that position. Right. So he's a good shooter. He gets confused when he has to do both. He's still, he's not ready to do both. So he has to learn how to really run a team to become a starting point guard in this league. So you don't think he's ready? Well, let's see what he work on this summer. Now, every year, everybody needs to get better, needs to up their game. I can give you a perfect example. His, his teammate, Kentucky, Tyrese Maxey, the same type of guard, combo guard in college, came out. Now, once they just asked him to shoot, once he tried to be a point guard, he couldn't really do it. Once they just asked him, don't worry about the responsibilities, just become a shooter, it, it, it just blossomed. Okay. So you see, now if you did that with quickly, he wouldn't be that point guard. He would be a better, he would be more of a shooter, a competition to come in and change the game. You still need a leader. He's not that yet. He doesn't know how to run a team yet to be a leader. It takes a leader to do those, those right. uh, if, boss championship level. If Derrick Rose, who's the back point guard for the Knicks, mm -hmm. didn't get hurt in February, do you think this yeah, would have been more February. of a mentor? He would have been, we'd have won at least 10 more games with Derrick Rose. The reason being because they would have never had to put Burke. Burks is not a two-point guard. Now, we had him running the team ever since the Kimber Walker trade didn't work out. I wish that would have worked out. Now, he was a leader, but his knees just didn't carry him no more, so he couldn't even hit the shot no more. But that's what we need. We need somebody like Derrick Rose that can always calm the team down. You know, he's seen it all, done that, and he knows the tip of the team. Get this person involved, get that person involved. I can look for my shot later. If you need my shot, then I can take it. Somewhat similar to like what Chris Ball does. Right. So you think um, Kimba Walker was a bad pickup? Well, only because of age and injury. They should have given him a real, I don't know if they gave him, I mean, normally when you do a trade, you do a, a physical. Right. But his knees have been bad for years. So I guess they didn't really give him that physical to check his knees. Right. But I don't think it was, it was a good idea because we still needed a, a leader, but it just was the wrong guy. Right. Someone I interviewed said that Kimba Walker didn't fit with the Knicks because he was overzealous of being in New York, playing for the city he's from. I don't think that was the case. The case was he just didn't have it no more. He's, Kimber Walker's been through a lot of, and he's a slick, slight of body, so he's been through a lot of war, and his knees is fucked up. You can't play injured. You know, it's, you can try, you can get up, you can work up, you get one game, but then that injury ain't going nowhere. It's still it. Right. So, you yeah. know, it depends on how bad his knees are. Now, once your knees go, that's what slowed Derrick Rose down, the knee injuries. Right, right. And now, now he's a backup. But he would be a star in this league. Absolutely. Remember, he used to be MVP. Right. Until the knee injuries. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 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 it's a correlation yeah. to the two, you know? Now injuries. I want to talk about coaches, man. Okay. Beside Red Hoseman, who took it all. Yeah. We had a lot of coaches, man. Yeah, I got me sweating now. We, we, we got, uh, we <laughs> had Mike, Antonio, Mike D. We had, uh... Jeff Hornacek, 
David yeah. Fisdale. Yeah, a lot of the coaches that wasn't really, you know. I mean, it was test coaches. Well, let me tell Mike you, Mike Woodson. Mike, I think we should have kept Mike Woodson from that last time, that last season. He was the last one that before the playoffs this year. He was the last one that had the veteran group that took us to the playoffs. They had, had a winning record. He won 50 some games, but the players got. I think um, that's we had Jason Kidd, we had Wallace, we had a lot of old vets, but they got hurt towards the playoffs, and then he just couldn't take them over the hump. They was it was injured, but we just had an older team at that time. Right. But he coached them the best. He he the one that damn near. Did, and been switching on defense. Right. You know what I'm saying? Woodson goes way back. But would you prefer Woodson over Tom Thibodeau? Mm. I mean, yeah. they, they both different. I mean, they one specializes style. in offense, and the other one specializes in defense. defense. But I think Woodson would have been – he would have been a good coach if he'd had the chance. Thibodeau, he's a defensive guy, but then he could be stuck in his way sometimes. I don't know if he's that innovative to try new shit. Yeah, speaking of him and being stuck in his ways, what do you say to those who say that he don't develop the youth? Well, like he's the specialty is with the vets, and he don't give the youth a chance to shine, man. See now, there's there's that's a two part question. He doesn't really. I, I wouldn't say he don't develop the youth. He don't put that much trust into them to let them learn from their mistakes. But what I would say about him, if if you on his side, he gonna ride with you to the. To, to his last days. You see, he bring back all his old players. All his old players still like to play for him. Right, Jimmy yeah, so Butler. So he, he can't be that bad. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, Jimmy Butler. Look, look who's on the team now. Rose, and we got my man, um, TJ, um, my man from Brooklyn, from Fort Greene. I can't even get his name. Is at the, his name is at the tip of my tongue. But um, anyway, the one that was in Minnesota, he was with him in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? He still had a, but he brings back vets, is what I'm saying, to help. Teach the people, uh, teach the younger guys, you know, his style of play, what he's expecting from them, how hard did he want them to work. I don't know why that name is eluding me. I'm seeing this big ball head in my head, you know, other center, that third center. Talking about Taj Gibson. Yeah, Taj Gibson. He played with, how long, how many, how many teams he played with Thibodeau? Three or four teams. He can't be that bad if everybody want to come back and play for him. People want to play with him. So he, I wouldn't say he, the knock on him is that he runs guys into the ground. That was a knock on him. That so you, you, guys you believe that? Minutes, no, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that because if you look at all coaches, by the time you get to the playoffs, they pay it down to like seven, eight men, an eight man rotation. He lets guys go. He, he plays ten guys in a, in, a, in a regular season, so I don't really see it that. But I think he has trust in his vets to do the right thing and trying to win games. He's trying to win. Okay. Now the, the development coach, I think that's like a misnomer because most coaches have about ten assistants. They all got assistants. They all get attached to one player and help them develop. So it's all about your team to develop a player. Right. One coach doesn't – he's not in a player where every each player, like, trying to develop him. Right. You got to get that from within your – when you get your assistance. Right. To develop the, those players. Those are organizations. That's what makes development, organizations. Organizations. Yes. Okay. And you get the guy either a freeway or not, you know what I'm saying? So. All right, all right. Now, when I mention players like Mitchell Robinson, who plays the center position, man, mm -hmm. you all seen the growth of Mitch. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is he worth the extension coming up, man? I think he's worth – I mean, this is his first year. He wasn't really out from injuries. But that boy could do things that a lot of players can't do as far as running up and down, quick jump. I say he's worth a contract, but I wouldn't say max or something. He, he's worth a good 20, 20 a year. He, he's worth an extension, but it all depends on what that extension is. You don't want to – he's not an offensive player yet. He needs to develop on offense. That's what he needs. He can dunk on anybody. He can run with anybody. But he needs a little move here there, and he'll be a more valuable player. He okay. doesn't have that, that – one or two moves in the post, he will be a more valuable player. More valuable player. But for right now, he's a defensive. He, he can run the floor. Every team wants that. Believe me, every team would like to have that. Every team would want I'm hearing that he got a three ball behind the arc, which they won't yeah. let him express. Well, until he can prove that he can do it on a consistent basis, that's probably why. Okay. You know? R.J. Barrett, is he the face of the team? Now, R.J. Barrett, he's been working on his game since his rookie year. I mean, he couldn't hit a jump shot to save his life. He, he's getting better and better. So to say he's the face, I wouldn't say he's the face. It seems like the transition is going to be him being the number one option. But he still has to get more than one move going to the left. He, you know, he was hitting a little bit of threes. He got to be more consistent to be the face, to be that guy that says he's going to be an all-star. Okay. I don't know if he, he's that all-star yet. You don't he's think he's that all-star he, yet? He's ascending. He's ascending. He's getting better. If I rewind back the clock, when we go back to the draft, where we had John Morant 
Zion Williams, RJ Barrett. I would have took any one of them first. Because we need a point guard. Ja would have been the guy I wanted. I would have took him first overall. Zion, because he's a marvel, he can do shit that you never could do. But to worry about him, is, could he last and do that same shit for years and years? He's box office. But, you know, I would have had to get Ja because if point guard is what we needed, I would have took my oh man uh, Zion second and RJ was like. The last one off the draft you would have took? Not that, I mean, out of those top three. I was looking at Reddish. Even though we got him on the team now, but back in that draft, Reddish was picked up a seven. I thought Reddish was a better prospect at that time. He was a better shooter. He was a better, you know, get up and down. RJ Barry used to just run, run. But what you going to seem like he had more skill? Right, right. Reddish. Speaking of Cam Reddish, was you disappointed with this playing time Tom Dippado was giving him? Nah, because he came in at the end of the season. He was hurt. His rotation was set. You got to learn the defensive plays. You got to learn the rotations. And if he was hitting the shots, he probably would have played more. So it was just it came at the last minute of the season. Now, with a first training camp, best man gets the, get the positions. So I think it wasn't, it wasn't, he just came in the last too late. And then he got hurt. He couldn't even finish. Okay. Now, I want to talk about Julius Randle again, concerning his attitude, man. A lot. The thumbing down of Nick fans, man. That wasn't good. Well, when you do shit like that with New York, they're gonna, they'll, they'll, they'll never let you lay that down. But New York, they just want to see you win. And if you make a mistake, just own it. Be honest, like y'all fucked up. Don't, when a fan, when, when New York boo you because they want you to do better, they don't boo you because they hate you. They just want to see you do better. They don't, they don't want to see you fucking up. And as soon as you do something great, they're going to applaud you. New York, if you win it, it's the best place ever. But if you lose it, they're going to let you know. This is New York. We ain't, you, gonna, we, ain't, we ain't gonna stand for no. Man, we've been dealing with this shit forever. Why would you know? People, there's people in the stands are paying money, so right. As long as they don't go over the line, boo. That should that should cheer you up. Like, all right, let me, let me do something better. So and, I don't, now that stumped down, that was he should have known better. Because now what did that did? That didn't help him. Right. So, you know now you like then he had to apologize. He had to roll that shit back. Okay. And Tom Dibodeau, we, we was the fourth seed with his coaching. Yeah, we made it to the fourth seed that, that year. Yeah, this year. This year, well, well injury. So I, I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't say injury because every team had injury in COVID. So this year, the disappointment of Julius Randle not playing up to expectations and then not having Derrick Rose, that killed us. No leadership at the point guard. And then Kimba Walker didn't work out. And without Derrick Rose and Kimba Walker, our leadership was void. We didn't have nobody to run the team. So they had to put Burks in. He's not a point guard. Burks is not a point guard. You don't like Burks? I don't, I don't like Burks. He's a good combo off the bench. He can play any position. But to run the team for the whole season, he's not really that guy. He's not going to get He's every- somewhat like a clutch shooter to me. Yeah, he's more of a clutch. He's not going to get everybody in position. And, uh, you know, he's going to try to get his shot. Oh, let me give it to Randy. Right. I mean, you know, he's, just, he's not a point guard. So that held us back from a lot. I think that, that was – if you had a, a leader like a Rose or Kimball was healthy, that's at least five, ten wins. They would have made the playoffs. Okay. So it's little things that you can, you know what I'm saying, little things that could have been different. All right. Our season was derailed by the point guard position. And you see they tried to work on it. I mean, they tried to get Kimba. Rose, they gave Rose a three-year contract. It just didn't, it didn't, it didn't play. All right. And this Danell in the coffin. My boy Quentin Grimes, man. I like Quentin Grimes. Quentin got grit, baby. As a, as a shooting guard, I think he's going to stay. I think he's going to be better this year. He looked like the type of guy that go – all season and work on his game to get better. Like he tried to improve. I seen him at Kansas. Then he went to um, Mexico State. He went to one of those teams. Or, or he, he transferred. Matter of fact, he went to Houston. And then he got he got better. Then he got drafted 25th. I still look at him as a he's a, he got he got he got he got size six five, and he loves to play D. And he has a jump shot. That's the typical three and D. You need a guy that's willing to play hard D and that can shoot. So he's a keeper. Is Evan Farnell a keeper? We paid him. Hopefully, I think, I hope. Well, we got to keep him because we paying him. But I hope Grimes beat him out because he's not that defensive. He'll make a play here, play there. But he ain't consistent to you. He's not consistent. He, he's our best shooter right now because we because we avoid the shooting. So that's why we he, we need to keep him. We need shooters on the team. Right. So he, he's a keeper for that reason because he's he's our best shooter, basically. All right, man. And that's what it is, man. I want to thank that's you for right. coming on Real Nick, Talk baby. with Nick, expressing – your thoughts, baby. I appreciate you, man. Give it up for the OG. Hit me up in the comments. Let it be known what is said. The real nigga New York, baby. The real nigga New York. And we out. Peace. All right.